Good morning. We're at uh, Sheffield Steam Fair. We've been here for quite a few days now, uh, building up. Come here with the hut. Currently sat on the veranda. Uh, it's not finished yet by any stretch, but um, we've had a couple of outings with the hut. In fact, no, we've had, this is the third. And basically, the, the well, the summer's kind of got in the way with the filming side of things, but we've got a, a fair few clips waiting uh, to show you of us getting it out going to the aqua fair the aqua fair was such a big fair we didn't get a great deal of footage uh, so we're going to try and get a little bit of footage here at sheffield uh, it took me about four hours to get here from marsden i uh, got the old david brown uh, she is just sat over there look she's done sterling work getting us here i've been here nearly a week now just shy um getting fixed up putting the uh the fairground together well, sorry the show ground together I've been very, very comfortable. There's a few little niggles that we'll explain over the over the uh, over the course of the video, but um, we're not doing too bad, really. Um, nothing has uh, catastrophically failed. We've had some failures, but not some catastrophic ones. Uh, been a very comfortable experience. Uh, so uh, here's a few videos and clips of uh, what we've been up to uh, in the run up to to, ha to to having some outings with the hut, and of course the trip out to Aquath as well. So here's the first time that the hut uh, has moved. It uh, got pushed in there as a chassis. And uh, we're about to pull it out now and just get it out onto the flat and ready for its maiden voyage. Now you will notice as I pull it out that the bottom of the walls is not straight. Now that's because we've used reclaimed steel. So as we pull it out, we can then get the grinder just in there and make things a little bit uh, straighter. Now we're not we're not looking to achieve great things here. All we want is it to look a little bit um, less wiggly than that. Um, so we're going to pull it out. There she goes, and you will see the rear of the hut it will be at its already cut point, and then we'll continue the line on and cut it all down. So that's the first time that she's ever moved as a hut. You've never brought one of my chairs? I seem to remember a, a sun lounger that you spent the entire fucking weekend on and then managed to book that. Hey, hey, Benna, Benna, too. We're cooking on gas. Check that out. We're going to get a smaller gas bottle. That's all we had. in the morning and we're, we're about to set off. She's not finished yet but she's not far off. So we're all hitched up and we've got a little 880. Come and have a look. She's hitched up as well. So we're off to Ackworth from Marsden. Come and join us. As soon as there was enough light we could set off. Heading for Ackworth, about 35 miles away. This is me just squeezing through the gate there. The hut is designed to just nicely fit through. This is the first time the hut has ever hit the road. It is previously a hay trailer. And there's my little dog Maisie. 
she enjoyed the, the trip pretty much all the way to Aqua, sat on my knee. Here's Kieran, now the 880 is slightly narrower. And the hut on the back of that tractor is also only about four foot wide. I built that a few years ago to go behind my little grey Ferguson. Now I was quite worried that the hut was going to shove uh, myself and the tractor all the way down the hill. The hut is fairly heavy so we did have it in low box second gear with the diff lock engaged and there was no sign that we'd been pushed down to the bottom of the hill. At the bottom of that hill there is uh, quite a fancy stone wall in somebody's garden. That does get rebuilt every few years and uh, thankfully not due to me running into it. the centre of the village onto the main Manchester Huddersfield Road, that's the A62. And we can finally achieve our maximum cruising speed of about 18 miles an hour. That clunking that you can hear there is the hitch as it clonks in the back of the tractor. It's a NATO type towing hitch, so quite a round ring. Uh, just heading still on the A62 now as we approach Slawit. Once again doing about 18 miles an hour seems uh, uh, like it, we're going a lot faster but that is uh, the cruising speed of the tractor and uh, fairly soon we're going to see a uh, young boy Kieran there he is and uh, the, the glory of this particular hut is that I can look straight through the door and out of the back window uh, as to who is behind me so just keeping an eye on young boy there so we've skipped right through all the way uh, into Huddersfield now. We've already travelled about eight miles and this is the centre of Huddersfield. Now Huddersfield is a wonderful town. Uh, the architecture uh, really is impressive and there I am uh, trying to uh, get uh, Brittany, uh, our camera lady, to pan round and look at some of the beautiful buildings that we've actually got. There's Castle Hill and Victoria Tower up on the very top there. I was privileged a fair few years ago to be able to change a light bulb on the very top of that tower. So we have already done a stop and checked the wheel bearings to make sure that nothing's getting too warm. Uh, just as we wait there at the traffic lights, keeping an eye, making sure everything's all right. Still very early in the morning, it's about uh, six o'clock in the morning as we uh, travel around the ring road of Huddersfield. And uh, the architecture really starts uh, to boost now and as you can see on the right there's all the university buildings right from the big white building down the right that was only built last year all the way around to the church um, uh, the George and the uh, Art Deco type buildings and then we pan around to the left and there is the Queensgate Market which only just recently been listed and that roof that you can just see in shot is the only roof I believe in existence in the UK. There is great plans for Huddersfield uh, to rejuvenate a considerable area of it, uh, known as the Blueprint. Whether it will ever happen is another matter. And there's one of the other churches. I believe that gets used for the graduation ceremonies at Huddersfield University, and quite often frequented by Patrick Stewart. Now there's the rest of the university complex, and some quite modern buildings. The jury's out as to whether they're going to look quite as good as the older ones do after a couple of hundred years. So we are approaching the Shawhead roundabout now where we need to be going in a right direction. Uh, so I'm having to swap lanes there. Now as you can see from the tractors there are no wing mirrors. So it's a case of leaning round and also uh, checking through the back window of the hut. So there's the Shawhead roundabout. I was actually in the wrong lane so I'm actually getting the right lane. Just ensuring that young boy follows me. Uh, his sense of direction is a little bit questionable at times. So as long as he's following me, I can uh, rest easy and from what we can see he is somewhere, I think he got caught the last bit of the traffic lights there, but he will be on his way 
within the next few seconds and up there you can see the Kingsgate shopping centre. Uh, not a bad building and that's actually the car park for it. Here he is. As I said earlier that hut is only designed for a little Grey Ferguson so the 880 David Brown tows it with ease. As we travel out towards Dalton now uh, the Aspley Marina is coming up on the left hand side. This is where the Huddersfield Broad Canal meets the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. And very soon, you can't really make out, but we're actually going over the top of the canal right now. If you were to follow that canal up in the, in the direction towards the right, uh, you would eventually end up in Marsden where we set off from. But it takes two days to get there. Uh, we've done it on a tractor in less than an hour. So this is uh, Mole Green and the top of Dalton. And those that know me, uh, that bus stop's quite poignant. Uh, a few years ago in uh, January, there was a horrific accident there which I witnessed. I managed to uh, uh, save, uh, well certainly save the life of one lady. So pulling in for diesel now. Uh, so all road runs, uh, with the exception of charity runs, say that we should be running on white diesel. So uh, just stopping for a bit of a top up of white diesel, uh, instructing young boy to go to the other side of the pump, what we like to do uh, is uh, just, just try and keep nice and close together, get fuelled up, ready for our onwards journey. Now this is the favourite part of Young Boy's trip. In the distance, very soon, we're going to see that iconic Golden Arches. Young Boy's been looking forward to this all the way down. His stomach literally thinks his throat's been cut. So it's about time we stopped and had a little bit of breakfast. So we've travelled all the way to Waterloo in Huddersfield, where there is one of the two branches of McDonald's in Huddersfield. So we're just travelling down from the top of Huddersfield from Grange Moor in towards Wakefield and there is the border for Huddersfield and Wakefield just past it and coming into view on the left hand side there is the National Coal Mining Museum for England. The museum is based on the site of Cap House Colliery and this is at Overton in Wakefield. It opened in 1988 as the Yorkshire Mining Museum and it was granted national status in 1995. Now the original colliery was sunk in the 1770s and Hope Pit in the 1820s, that's the pit alongside. We're just pulling in there now to let some traffic past. And the museum offers guided underground tours where visitors can experience the conditions miners worked in and see the tools and machines they used as the industry and the mine developed throughout the years. The museum sits on a 45 acre semi-rural site with over a dozen gallery, galleries documenting the social and industrial heritage of the mines. And as you can see there, we've got the, uh, the little steam shunting locomotive and carriage. The pit headgear just coming into view, well worth a day out if you're planning a trip up towards West Yorkshire. So there's the winding house on the left hand side site of the old steam engine complete with the chimney and here we're approaching the old pit baths there they are on the left hand side and used as a gate guard is one of the old shearing machines uh, just sat there on the grass we leave the National Coal Mining Museum site and head on down towards Harbury Bridge so just about to go under the viaduct 
and the viaduct comprised of 17 arches and it was first trafficked in 1905. Unfortunately it closed in 1968. So we're travelling further on towards the actual Horbury Bridge. However we have first got to cross over the Calder and Hebel navigation. This is the bridge that we're about to go across right now and there's the canal or the navigation it should be known as. And to the right we have the Bingley Arms pub. Now the Bingley Arms pub has unfortunately been closed. It's now owned by Osset Brewer and this is Horbury Bridge itself going over the River Calder. Now if we were to set off up the navigation, uh, that's the bridge previous to the one that we've just talked about, it would take about four days to get back to Marsden on a boat. So we're taking the uh, sweeping bend round to the right now and uh, up towards Horbury itself. Now Horbury is known for the Hymn Onwards Christian Soldiers. Quite a lot of history around Horbury and its surrounding areas. Now, I've been in this area uh, for about 37 years and just coming up on the left hand side is an old sailing boat and that has been there for as long as I can remember. Uh, it's an old wooden thing and it gets less and less every year. Here it comes. Lovely old historic boat. Such a shame to see it uh, going rotten. So we've skipped along now and we're heading towards Wakefield. And to the left there is Thorns Park. Now Thorns Park is the main open space in Wakefield. It was built as a green space for the workers who uh, were mainly employed in the mills and the industry and the mining industries in and around Wakefield. It's 60 hectares and there's a two mile circular path that follows the boundary of the park. So we've joined the main Denbydale Road now and that's uh, we're heading into Wakefield. Now we don't want to disturb the traffic too much at this point as it is heading towards rush hour now. So we, tend to, we try and skirt around the edge of Wakefield so we're going to skirt down the bottom towards the river, the River Calder and along past the marina and onto Chantry Bridge. Chantry Bridge. <clears throat> now, probably one of the most favourite parts of my trip out towards Ackworth and Chantry Bridge is a Grade 1 listed structure. There it is on the left, crossing the River Calder here in Wakefield. The bridge incorporates the Chantry Chapel and it was built shortly after it was granted a licence as a toll bridge in 1342. Completion of the structure was believed to have been delayed by the Black Death which swept through England during 1349 and 1350. So we've scooched on a few more miles now and this is the area of Nostal. Now Nostal has a gorgeous house known as Nostal Priory and the grounds are just starting on the left hand side there. Are there rose gardens, a bit of a garden centre and there's also a static caravan park as well. Nostal Priory is a Palladian house and it dates from 1733. It was built for the Wynne family on the site of the medieval priory. The priory and its contents were given to the National Trust in 1953. Nostal Priory occupies 121 hectares, which is the equivalent of 300 acres of parkland. Within the grounds, are the gardens and lakeside walks. 
The main facade of the house faces east towards a grass vista, leading to a lake on the west side of the house. Now we're just about to go over the lake right now. This, uh, once again, is one of my favourite parts of the trip here. Now we're quite lucky this time insofar as there are some temporary traffic lights which are normally the bane of my life. However, we've had the opportunity to stop and have a quick look. I'm not, not quite sure whether we're going to get to have a glimpse of the house, but the house is on the left-hand side of the shot right now. So there's that beautiful lake, and the main road goes over it. There's the house just in shot right now. So 2012, there was a planning report, and uh, that was to allow the Yorkshire Air Ambulance to operate from that site. It was operational by the summer of 2013. So the Yorkshire Air Ambulance now operates from Nostal Priory. Its previous site was at Leeds Bradford Airport. Now the junction just coming up on the right there is where I, in spectacular fashion, failed my Class 2 HGV driving test. Now we're going to pull in at the main gates of Nostal Priory just to allow any traffic that's behind us to get around. I've been thinking about myself today how I changed How I really don't care if you are here Or if you don't stay Despite now realising we have no bacon, we plough on through the village of Ragby. Ragby dates back for centuries, and the village pub, the Spread Eagle, is just coming up on the left hand side. Now it is a Sam Smith's pub, and it's such a shame that it's been closed for a few years now. Just coming up on the left hand side, the next village is Ackworth. Entering the village of Ackworth now, you can just see the sign on the left there, on the old millstone. And despite us getting to Ackworth, we've still got quite a few miles to go yet. Now Ackworth originally was a mining village, I suppose before that was a farming village. But it does have some mining heritage. And there you have uh, some of your typical miners type houses on the left hand side. With more coming up on the right, further into the village that we drive. Now both tractors have been faring exceptionally well, no problems at all, and as you can see, burning nice and clean with minimal smoke out of the exhaust. We've passed through the centre of Ackworth now, looking at some of these beautiful houses as we descend upon the co-op to replenish our stocks of bacon. So this is the main Doncaster to Wakefield Road and if we were to plough all the way on of course we would ultimately end up towards Doncaster however we want to be turning a left at the roundabout in Ackworth where we're going to find the co-op but also the showground a couple of miles further on. Now on this roundabout is the Beverly Arms which has uh, been a very successful pub over the years also got a restaurant incorporated there known as Ego.
Great. You don't need that. You don't need that. Where would bread be in the bread shop? Oh, really? Nothing. Look, there's a... Is there them... Um, them ones? Them, them. So, down one you go, not bad. Yeah? I think that'll be just a job. That probably goes. You want to get two? By itself. I got so old. Okay. Kieran forgot bacon, it's fine. Can't believe Kieran forgot the bacon. What did you forget, Kieran? Not for you. Sure. You want some cookies? This building was where John Fowler died, a Wiltshire-born Quaker who devoted his life to the advancement of agriculture. He developed the first practical method of mechanical cultivation using a cable system powered by steam engines. It was the founder of the steam plough works in Hunslet, Leeds. So we're just approaching the Ackworth Grammar School. This school was founded by John Fothergill and others in 1779 as a boarding school for Quaker boys and girls. Now there is still boarding facilities there but the majority of the pupils are now day students. And it's quite expensive to go, it is a private school.
friends with me, they'll miss me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, To the postman. <laughs> Next morning, letter back. Return to send a address unknown. Bye, Mr. Merrick. Bye. Ready? Showtime. It's rolling. Huh? It's going. It's going. So I got you singing on it. Singing this Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Aqua Scamo 2022. It's great to see everybody here once again after a two year break. Just going to have a quick rerun over what's happening in the arena this weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. The Land Rovers 10.30, the Tractor Trailer Reversing Competition, 11 o'clock, the Tractor Parade at 11.30, Motorbikes 12.15, Miniature Steam at 1 o'clock, the Tractor Games will be happening at 1.45, the Commercial Vehicles at 2.15, and last but certainly not least, we have the cars at 3 o'clock. So it'll be great to see you in the arena over the course of the weekend. That plan uh, is for both Saturday and Sunday. So it'll be great to see you if you're in any of those sections. Get yourselves into the arena. So Land Rovers, 10.30. Tractor trailer reversing, 11 o'clock. Tractors, 11.30. Motorbikes, 12.15. Miniature steam, 1 o'clock. Tractor Games 145, Commercial Vehicles 215, and finally the cars at 3 o'clock. See you all in the morning. <laughs>